Okay, so now we have an understanding of fiscal and monetary policy. We have to understand what sort of package can be put together in order to counteract the problems that happen at a boom and a slump. So if we look at a boom, again, just to remind, remind ourselves, we see that we have the good things, which is high economic growth, and we see low unemployment, so plenty of people are in work. Okay. However, the main issue that we need to counteract is high inflation, Okay, where prices are rising too quick. The only way that we're really going to counteract high inflation here is to try and restrict people from spending. Okay. So you've got to think about how... Using fiscal and monetary policy, how we're going to lead to people to spend less. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to contract the economy. Contract is to make something smaller. Okay, so we put contractionary policies in place. So the mixture of the fiscal and monetary policy that is going to make the economy shrink becomes smaller. Okay, so slow it down. Okay, so we're going to um, put higher taxes on people and on businesses okay so people are going to pay more income tax so they're going to have less money to spend businesses are going to have to pay higher taxes and that means that maybe they can't expand and take on new people these have impacts of restricting people's ability to spend okay um we're going to see lower government spending okay so um government aren't going to spend as much okay because of we know the multiplier effect that government spending has so if they don't spend that money it has a downward spiral impact okay we then set on having higher interest rates now high interest rates mean that people are less likely to borrow because if you remember interest rates are the punishment for borrowing because it means you're going to have to pay back more so you put off from doing it. It also is going to mean that high interest rates are, are really attractive to people who want to save money. Okay, so people are more likely to leave their money in their bank. So if that's the case, putting all these three together means that people are going to have less money to spend or are going to leave their money in the bank. So if you, if you can imagine putting all that together is going to make the economy shrink and become smaller and to slow down. So to recap, these contractionary policies that are going to make our economy smaller is to have higher taxes, to have lower government spending, and to have higher interest rates. So we now need to have a look at the slump, okay? And what the, what the government does in terms of what they put together in the fiscal and monetary policy side of things in order to make the economy bigger. Because in a slump, we've got a lot of problems and we need to try and get people spending. So we need to think about how we're going to go about doing that. Okay, so there's a few things that the government can do to make it more attractive for people to go out and spend their money. Okay, so first of all, what they might do is they're going to lower taxes. Okay, um, if they lower taxes on for people and for businesses, it might mean that they're able to have more disposable income as people. And it means that business maybe have more money to expand and take more people on. Okay. You also see that there is higher government spending because if you remember we have that multiplier effect of if the government spends money that has a real sort of positive impact on people going out to spend because people now have jobs, work in hospitals, in schools and so on. Okay. We also see low interest rates. Now what low interest rates means that it's cheaper to borrow because it means we've got to pay less back when we borrow money and it's less attractive for us to leave our money in the bank okay so all these factors of lower taxes maybe people having more jobs low in lower interest rates is going to have an effect that that people are going to more likely go out and spend their money and what that'll hopefully do is increase economic growth um hopefully get people into jobs and is going to um increase that level of inflation to the steady rate that we want okay so just to recap on that um we've got expansionary policies where we have lower taxes higher government spending and then low interest rates now sort of a slight caveat to that is you probably notice that there might be a problem with all of this and this is how governments often get themselves into trouble okay you're seeing that during this time there are more people uh, out of work so there's less people in work okay we're asking them to pay less taxes okay and we're increasing our government spending 
Okay, so there's less people working, paying less tax, but we're increasing the amount that the government are um, spending on things. And this is where governments often maybe have to borrow money, and this is how governments end up getting into debt. And this is one of the issues where we're at now, and we have to have a period of something called austerity. Okay, so even though we're in a slump currently, okay, we don't actually have expansionary policies in the UK right now. We have something called austerity policies. OK, we, we still have low interest rates. So if you ask your parents, they will um, say that interest rates are pretty low now. So if your parents were buying a house, their interest rates and their mortgage is probably really low. But what you're seeing is that the government have not bought down taxes, OK, because they have a lot of money to try and uh, pay back from the money that they borrowed. OK, and they are... Um, not spending a lot of lot of money on building new things and 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 so on okay obviously covid time is slightly different they are spending a bit of money but really that is the stage that we are currently at so it doesn't always follow um and it doesn't always self-rectify okay a lot of um difficult things to get your head around today um and you might have to re-watch these videos a few times and visit the sort of the the links that I've put in the the various powerpoints okay you're not going to get this the first time okay it, it's something that we have to revisit and go over and over again what I'd like you to make sure that you do today is that you've made notes on the sheet um, outlining um, the different features of slumps and booms and what the governments do to inter to to counteract it and what the government economic and economic objectives are but what's even more important is it's not just a copy and down exercise. It is you are taking time to understand it. OK, thank you very much.